Keep on standing. We're going to a faith clinic now. Let's close our eyes to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day. Thank you for this new time. Thank you, Lord, because of your word. We're asking, oh Lord, that you increase the faith of everyone in Jesus' name. The faith of the conqueror. That you give to everyone, even at this time, in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, when this faith is planted within us, and we stand on the solid ground of the promises of God, no, nothing will be able to stop us. We're going to the land that you have given unto us, unto your people. And Lord, will take all your people there in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome you this morning to our faith clinic session. And what a great day it will be today as we come together. You all know what a clinic is. When you've been feeling weak and tired and it appears that all strength is failing you, slipping away from you. And then you want to become stronger. And then you go to the clinic. It may be that the doctor there will inject you of something. And then all of a sudden you begin to feel, I feel something coming back. And I couldn't walk long distance before. But now, see, power, strength, energy is coming back. And eventually, when that thing begins to work in your heart, in your life, in your system, and then everywhere is energized in your system, you say, Doctor, thank you very much. You give him a call. You say, That thing is working. This one, this money will work. Yeah. It will work in your heart, it will work in your life. It will work in your soul. And the Lord will pump into you everything you need to be a conqueror. Even from this time in Jesus name. The courage of faith for success. That's what we're looking at today. The courage of faith for success. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1. In Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all, all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, to not from each to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong, and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. You will see, in that passage we have read together, how the Lord told Joshua over and over and over again, Be strong and be of a good courage. In verse 6. In verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous. In verse 9, be strong and of a good courage. You will see then, if we're going to do what the Lord has called us to do, we cannot allow the spirit 
of the coward to be in us. The spirit of the timid to be within us. The spirit of the fearful to be within us. The great commission, the task and the work the Lord has given us, has called us to do, requires strength of mind. Requires courage of conviction and the courage of faith. That's why the call came to Joshua over and over and over again. Be strong and of a good courage. That means then to fulfill his call. To fulfill his commission. Here is something that he needed. He needed to be strong. He needed to be very courageous. Fear leads to weakness and cowardice. Fear leads to weakness and cowardice. And fear is not something the world gives you. Fear is what you get yourself from the world. Looking at the giants. You are the one making you afraid. You are looking in the wrong direction. Looking at the walls around you. It's not the wall that is making you afraid. It's what you think about the walls that make you afraid. Thinking about everything you've heard about the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. It's not what you heard about them that is making you afraid. It's what you think about what you heard that is making you afraid. You are the one that is generating, producing, secreting the fear from your own mind. But Joshua was told, Joshua, you will stop that kind of looking, that kind of thinking. And now you're going to the land. Yes, that same land you saw before. The land of the giants. The land of the Canaanites. And now you'll be strong and very courageous. In fact, even his people realized that he needed that courage. In verse, in verse 18, whosoever he be that does that rebel, that does rebel, and will not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. What the Lord had told him, the people were telling him, Joshua, yes, will follow you. But who wants to follow a coward? Somebody comes up and he says, Hey, soldiers, file him. Kill up and come after me. Although I'm afraid, but all the same, I'm leading you to battle. Who wants to follow a coward? Who wants to follow a timid fellow? Who wants to follow a person that is not sure of himself? Who wants to follow somebody that doesn't have self-confidence to go into the battlefield? And so the people said, we hear what the Lord has been telling you. Be strong and of a good courage. We're willing to follow you too. Only we want to tell you, Joshua, we're not going to follow a coward. We want to follow somebody who is strong and of a good courage. So they told him, only be strong and of a good courage. As fear leads to weakness, faith leads to stress. As fear leads to cowardice, faith leads to courage. Neither Joshua nor anyone else can fulfill the God given commission without the courage of faith and the strength in the inner man if we're going to do what he has called us to do and we're going to do it we need courage strength spiritual stamina that will be able to go on and do what we are appointed to do we're told in Ephesians chapter 6 Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 10. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. That's what it takes. 
if we're going to do this work, if we're going to fulfill the great commission, if we're going to obey the Lord in every detail, if we're going to preach the gospel to the people that still need the word, the courage, the courage of faith, if we're going to be in every place he has appointed for us to be and reach all the people he has told us to go and reach, all the stories we hear, all the things we see, all the news we read, well, all the things people share will not come into our system. We'll say, yes, that happened. And now about that, we're still going to be strong and of a good courage that we will do what he has appointed for us to do in Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. It says in verse 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That's what it takes. Be strong. Strong in the mind. Strong in the heart. Strong in your spirit. Strong with biblical conviction. The courage of faith for success. We divide the message to three parts. Number one, courage of faith in God. Courage of faith in God. Number two, commitment of faithfulness to God. The commitment of faithfulness to God. Number three, companionship of the faithful with God. The companionship Of the faithful with God. Number one is the courage of faith. Let's come back to Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Joshua 1 verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. What's the foundation of that strength? What's the basis of that courage? The basis of that, the foundation of that, is faith in the promise of God. Faith in verse 3. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Faith in that, in what the Lord had said in verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses. So, I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. It is faith in that promise of God. It is faith in that proclamation of the Lord. That will make the man strong and of a good courage. No wonder then, immediately after verse 5, the Lord told him in verse 6, Be strong and of a good courage. Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. Joshua keep on repeating those promises of God. Every place the soul of my feet shall tread upon, God has given it to me. Say that to yourself. Repeat that to yourself. Confess that before everyone. Every place the soul of my feet shall tread upon, he has given it to me. If you say that every time, you'll forget your weakness and strength will come into your soul. No man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. I'm going to Jericho. No man shall be able to stand before me. I'm going to Ai. No man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. The Gibeonites are around the corner. No man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. The confederacy of the kings they are coming and they are binding themselves together. They want to wage war against me but no man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. It's a repetition. It's a confession of those promises of God. It will get into your mind, into your spirit, into your subconscious and then you are dreaming about it and thinking about it. You can only think one thought at a time 
You cannot think two thoughts at a time. The thoughts come one by one. And you can feed your mind with the promises of God. And if you're feeding your mind with the promises of God, no man, no man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. They may be tall. No tall man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. They may be warriors. No warring man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. They may be wicked. No wicked man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. They may be experienced warriors. No experienced man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. They may be magicians. No magical man shall be able to stand before me all the days of my life. It's a so repeat that yourself every time and you are confessing that every time the confession will bring the possession and then you are saying i am courageous i am fearless i am not a coward i'm going to go to all the places the lord has given me and nothing can touch my life until i finish the work the lord has given me to do it is when you say all that and repeat all those promises faith will come into you and then you have the courage of faith in god be strong and of a good courage for unto this people shall not divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. That thou mayest observe to do. That thou mayest observe to do. And you know what Joshua needed to realize is that there is a divine human partnership you do what you are called to do and then god will do what he's supposed to do moses stretch out your rod on the sea he stretch out the rod he didn't divide the red sea but when he stretched out the rod then the sea was parted you do your beat and god will do his beat moses strike the rock and water will come out moses did not bring water out of the rock but he did what the lord told him to do he struck the rock and god did the rest and water came out now israel walk around jericho he, they didn't bring down the walls but they walked around jericho you have to do what the lord calls you to do and then you are facing god they will do what he said they will do shout and the people shouted their shouts did not bring down the wall but they did what the lord told them to do and then god did what he said they will do and the walls came down you see that's what the lord is saying and all he tells us to do, there are simple things that we can do. Throw down your rod. Moses, I can do that too if I had the rod in my hand. Pick up the rod. Again, pick up the serpent. And he picked up by the tail. I can do that if I were there. And the Lord will do what he will do. Once you just do what he has told you to do. The courage is to trust in God. That if I do what the Lord has called me to do, then he will do what he said he will do. He will do it in your life. Amen. And then he said, only be thou courageous that thou mayest observe to do. It takes courage, courage to do. You know, sometimes when people are there, and uh, you know here are the jericho walls joshua what are we going to do i know what to do what is it what to do we're to walk around once every day that takes courage to say such a thing to adults look at these walls what are we going to do we're going to do a foolish thing a dumb thing an unheard of thing Something that is not historical. Something we have never read about in any history book. We are going to walk around each day. What a foolish thing. Do it. You know, sometimes if you are afraid, you are afraid to do something foolish. They will say, where am I coming from? They will say, how intelligent is this man? We don't want to look foolish before them. That's what we don't do. What we're called to do. But when you are facing God, 
go ahead and do what the Lord has said to do. That takes stress. That takes courage to be able to do this. And even though it will appear foolish to your followers, it will appear foolish to the people, do it. We're told in First Chronicles chapter 28. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20. The courage of faith in God. In First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20. And David said, to Solomon his son, be strong and of good courage. Solomon, wisdom without courage will be defeated. Wisdom without courage will fail. You know the people that have wisdom, they have knowledge, they have the light, they have the doctrine, they have everything, but they don't have courage in their heart. They're fearful. And whatever knowledge you have, if you don't have courage, the knowledge is not going to do anything. Whatever wisdom you have, if you don't have courage, you're not going to be able to rise up and get up and do what needs to be done. And whatever experience you have, whatever skill you have, uh, the, we uh, the weakness of fear, the weakness of fear brings will paralyze you while you're sitting down there. You'll be sweating all over the with your, your encyclopedia of knowledge, but the encyclopedia of knowledge will not do anything if you don't have courage. It's the courage of faith that will make you to be able to get up and say, In spite of the enemies, in spite of the challenges, in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the Jericho walls, I know I can and I will and I must. That's the courage. You know, some people, they spend all their time studying and reading. And it is not what you know. It is the courage to be able to use what you know. The courage to be able to say what you have learned. The courage to be able to rise up and say, here I am. The wisdom will mean nothing without courage. The knowledge will amount to nothing without courage. The experience, the skill, the ability will achieve nothing without courage. And so David said to Solomon, my son, be strong. And of a good courage. And do it. How do you know somebody is courageous? He does it. I'm very courageous. But you don't know. But you are not doing anything. If you are courageous. Well rise up and do the right thing. You'll do it. When there's courage. You'll say it. When there's courage. You'll preach it. When there's courage. You'll run there. When there's courage, you'll face the challenge. When there's courage, be strong and courageous and do it. It is the deed that reveals and demonstrates the courage. And then it says, fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. That's always the foundation on which courage is built. The word that God will be with you. That he will never fail you. That he will never forsake you. That's the promise. That's the proclamation. That's the declaration on which faith is solidly built. It will not fail thee nor forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work. Now, courage is not in a vacuum. Courage is because there's a commission. Courage is given because there's a work to do. There's a temple to build. There's a sanctuary to raise. There are souls to be saved. And there's work to do for the king of kings and the lord of lords. That's why we have courage. Somebody who doesn't have any, any work to do, does he need courage? Somebody who doesn't have any battle to fight, does he need courage? Somebody who doesn't have any sanctuary to build, does he need courage? Somebody who doesn't have the Canaanites to conquer, does he have courage? 
The reason we need courage, the courage of faith, is because the Lord has given us a commission and we want to address ourselves to that commission. It will not fail thee until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And then he tells us in Second Chronicles chapter 32, Second Chronicles chapter 32, verses 7 and 8. The courage of faith in God. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid. Nor be dismayed for the king of Assyria. No, for all the multitude that, was, that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. Again, that's a solid foundation. The solid immovable rock on which courage is built, there be more with us than with him. With him is the arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Ezekiel the king of Judah. In Psalm 27, Psalm 27, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 27, verse 1. The courage of faith in God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The man has been thinking about the Lord. What the Lord who the Lord is and what the Lord is to me. What the Lord can do and what the Lord has done for me. What the Lord is doing and what the Lord is doing in me. The power that worketh in us. That's the foundation of faith and courage. The Lord is my light and the Lord is my salvation. And then he says, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came near, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. And how David had a lot of enemies. Powerful enemies they were. Saul and all the people that followed after Saul. Great, great enemies they were. The Philistines. Great enemies they were. And yet he said, Yes, I know they are there. But I also know that God is there. And because I know God is there, that gives me the courage and the strength and the tenacity and the tough-mindedness and the decision, the dedication to do what the Lord has called me to do. I still remember, David could have said, the testimony of the Lord concerning me. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart that shall do all my will. He will fulfill all my will. And because that is the testimony God has about me, I'm going to live up to it. That's why I said the Lord is my light. And the Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Philistine? Or Saul? Who? That's courage. And then he said, The Lord is the strength of my life. That's strength. When the Lord becomes the strength of your life, of whom shall I be afraid? And he said, when the wicked, even my enemies, my foes, they came in the past. The testimony of what happened in the past strengthens us for the event and the test of the present. David said, it happened in the past. They came upon me, but they stumbled and they fell. And because of what I know of the past, that gives me the courage and the strength for the present. It said, they stumbled and fell down, and who should encamp against me? My heart shall not fear, though war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. And then he tells us in verse 13, I had fainted unless I had believed. I would have been a coward to you, except I had believed. 
I would have been trembling to you before the enemy, except I'd believed. I had fainted unless I'd believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting in the presence of God. And having all that spiritual energy and strength coming from the throne of God into your heart. That gives courage and strength. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And uh, he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse 31. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 31. This is courage. This is strength. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's courage. If God be for us, look around. Is Pharaoh there who can be against us? If God be for us, look around. Are the magicians throwing their rods down? But who can be against us? Look around. If God be for us, are the Assyrians there? And the servant of Elisha is saying, My master, what shall we do? There be more with us than they that be with them. Lord opened his eyes and he saw a chariot and he saw the horses and the chariots of fire around Elisha. Look around. If God be for us, what do you think of their Assyrians? If God be for us, hi, but Nebuchadnezzar is now furious and he said, If you will think over it, that will be all right. But if not, if I decide to cast you into the furnace of fire, who will deliver you? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If God be for us, what about Nebuchadnezzar? If God be for us, Daniel, what do you think about the lions then? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, Peter, hi, but the Sanhedrin that is trying to put you into the prison, and then they put your feet in the stalks as sieve, they're going to hinder the preaching of the gospel. He said, I'll just sleep in the prison. I'm going to take some rest. I need some rest even. And if those people give me a resting place in the prison, I'm going to rest there. And then the angel came and tapped him and said, get up on your feet and go. And declare to them all these words of life. If God be for us, who can be against us? But I see Herod and he's got all the people together. He's making an oration. And then when he finished, the people said, this is the voice of a God and not the voice of a and the angel came from heaven and smote him and he died and he became worms and the worms ate him up that's what I told you, if God be for us, who can be against us, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us, that's courage when you think about God you are not thinking about the people you're not thinking about the enemies you're not thinking about the challenges if God be for us who can be against us they will not succeed verse 37 nay in all these things not outside these things in in all these things while we are there in egypt or the magicians in all these things while we are there in babylon in the fire in all these things not outside while we're there in the lion's den, in all these things, you know, some people feel that if the Lord is going to really work, we have to be outside these things. But in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You have conquered already. The courage of faith in God. Point number two. Commitment of faithfulness to God. The commitment of faithfulness to God. We're back in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. We're reading from verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The commitment of faithfulness to God. The faithfulness expected of Joshua is that the book of the law shall not depart out of his mouth. The word of the Lord always upon his mouth. The word of faith. The word of truth. And the word of the almighty God always on his mouth. In Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. We're reading there from verse 9. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. The Lord's law, the word of God will be in your mouth. If you just start from the morning confessing the word of God. Every time you face a challenge, confessing the word of God. Every time you face an enemy, confessing the word of God. Every time there is a battle, confessing the word of God. You never take bad news in your mouth. But you take the good news, the glad tidings of the gospel in your mouth. This word will not depart out of your mouth. And it says over there that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand, as the Lord brought thee out of Egypt, it must be in your mouth. Not just in your heart. Not just in your head. Not just in your mind. In your mouth. We're looking at um, Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59, the word in the mouth. Chapter 59, verse 21. Isaiah 50, 59, verse 21, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit that is upon them, and my words which are put in thy mouth. Thy, my word which I have put in thy mouth. If there's fear in your heart, you're speaking another kind of word out of your mouth. If there is a sense of failure and defeat in your mind, you're speaking some other words out of your mouth. But if the word of the Lord is in your mouth, the word of power, the word of authority, which will speak, if that's in your mouth, the word of faith, if that's what's in your mouth, you're going to be strong and very courageous. It says in the words, my words, which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, says the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. The word that ought to be in your mouth. Malachi chapter 2. We're reading verses 6 and 7. In Malachi chapter 2 verse 6. The law of truth was in his mouth. That's how to succeed. In the ministry which the Lord has given us. That's how to make it. That the law of truth, the word of truth, always in your mouth. It says the law of truth was in his mouth. And iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity. And did turn many from iniquity. If the word of the Lord and the word of God is in your mouth, you will turn many people away from the iniquity. Verse 7, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. In Psalm 1. You remember what the Lord told Joshua. This book of the law. Shall not depart. Out of your mouth. 
Not only that, but you'll meditate. You'll meditate on it day and night. Be faithful to that meditation. Take in the word of God. Keep the Bible with you every time. Hold the Bible in your hand every time. And once in a while during the day, open it again and see a promise and see a warning and see a commandment and see a prophecy and see a declaration and see a proclamation and see a duty and see a challenge and see a commission and see a commitment and see what the Lord has called you to do. And then you meditate on that. It's in your mouth. It's also your meditation. In Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Reading from verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In the, in the law. In his law does he meditate day and night. Think it through. Think it over. Meditate in your mind. Repeat it in your mind. Analyze it in your mind. Interpret it in your mind. Apply it to your situation in your mind. You meditate therein, day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper meditate in first timothy chapter 4 first timothy chapter 4 verses 15 and 16 first timothy chapter 4 verse 15 it says meditate upon these things timothy you know how to turn how to turn weakness to strength meditate upon these things Timothy, do you know how to turn cowardice to courage? Meditate upon these things. Timothy, you are naturally timid. Do you know how to turn your timidity into tough-mindedness, tenacity? Meditate upon these things. Meditate upon the word of God. Meditate upon these things and give thyself holy to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Let's come back to Joshua chapter 1. In Joshua chapter 1, in verse 8, it says, The book of this book of the Lord. This book, not another book, this book, not a book that is written about the Bible, but this book, the Bible itself, not just the commentary, the Bible itself, the word of the Lord itself, not what the people say about the word of the Lord, that book, but this one, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein, day and night, that thou mayest observe to do. Your meditation will not just stop in quietness. Meditation. Thinking over. But then it will get you on your feet and your eyes to do. There are some people that just read and study and meditate. And that's the end. They become philosophers. They just think a lot of knowledge inside them. A lot of ideas inside them. A lot of philosophy inside them. And they're just philosophers. But they're quiet. They do nothing. The meditation is not your end. In just meditation that thou mayest observe to do. According to what is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. There's going to be a year of success. A year of triumph. A year of achievement. And a year of accomplishment. Number one is the courage of faith. 
Number two is the commitment of faithfulness. Number three, now companionship of the faithful with God. The companionship of the faithful with God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Don't allow that for a moment. Don't allow that a single day of this new year. Don't allow fear in your mind. Fear at your post of duty. You see, if you are fearing, you are looking at the enemy. You cannot be serving the Almighty and then concentrating on his enemy at the same time. If there is fear in your heart, you are looking at Satan. And what Satan can do in his servants, you cannot be serving the almighty God and then focusing attention on Satan at the same time. It says, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee. That's a companionship with God. If you are faithful to this, you are faithful to the word of God. It says there's companionship of the faithful with God. It says over here, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Again, we need to explain, whithersoever thou goest in the place of duty. Whithersoever thou goest, not in Egypt. Joshua, I hope you understand that you cannot go back to Egypt and say the Lord said, the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest, whithersoever thou goest in the land of which the Lord has described the perimeters, the territory unto you, unto the land where you are going to conquer the enemy, whithersoever thou goest there, the Lord is with you. You cannot stay back here in the wilderness and say, this is where I decide to be. And then it says, whithersoever thou goest. But you see, if you're going to claim the promise of God, whithersoever thou goest, you must remain right there. Whithersoever thou goest in the place. Where the Lord has commissioned you. Where the Lord has appointed you. Where the Lord has given you the things to do. The companionship of the Lord. The intimacy of the Lord. The promise of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. The power of the Lord. Whithersoever thou goest in the place appointed by the Lord. What if the Lord appointed for you to be in a particular state? You say, mm mm. I'm not going to be there. But I know that anywhere I go, the Lord is going to be with me. No, sir. It's in the place of appointment. It's in the place of duty. Whithersoever thou goest, in the place the Lord has appointed for you. That's where you are going to have the protection of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. The partnership of the Lord. The companionship of the Lord. In Deuteronomy. I'm reading to you from chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. And I'm reading from verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 23. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge. And said, be strong and of a good courage. For thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them. And I will be with thee. That's the companionship. You know, the assurance every time. The assurance every time. That if you stay at the post of duty. That if you remain where the Lord has appointed for you to be. That he says, I will be with thee. And when you know that when the Lord says, I will, then he will. When the Lord says, I will, it's right there. That he says, I'll be with you. The companionship of those who are faithful with the almighty God. In, Judge, in Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 12. Judges. Chapter 6, 
Reading from verse 12, the companionship, the partnership, the presence of the Lord with the people who are faithful to the call. In Judges chapter 6 verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, the mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? Where be all his miracles? which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee. Well, you know the Lord has sent you. And you have the confidence, the assurance. And then you have this thing, the certainty from heaven. The hand of the Lord is upon you. And the call of the Lord is upon your life. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, Oh, my Lord, wherewith? Shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in, the, in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. That's all we need. That's all we need. You feel small. You feel that you are the very least. And yet the Lord is saying, Have not I sent you? I will surely, certainly, without a shadow of doubt, I will be with thee. And then it says, And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. That's what gives us the conquering spirit. That's what gives us the spirit of the conqueror. When you know that this is the promise of the Lord, I will be with thee. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 8. In Jeremiah chapter 1 we're looking at verse 8 this companionship this partnership that the lord has promised us jeremiah chapter 1 verse 8 be not afraid of their faces you don't know what's in their mind all you can see is their face and you already make up your mind if their face is frowned up, then there must be a terrible plan in their mind. You are the one making your own conclusion. But don't look at their faces. The Lord said in verse 8, it says to this Jeremiah, be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. The Lord will deliver you. While you are the place of duty. In the place where the Lord has called you. It says for the Lord will be with thee. That's what it says. Companionship, partnership with the Lord. Isaiah chapter 41. In Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading to you from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. That's what we need. In these days of challenges, that's what we need. In these days of duty, that's what we need. In these days when we need actually to face quality, the work and the ministry, the commission, the Lord has given to us, this is what we need. The companionship, the partnership. The presence of the Lord. The power of the Lord walking in us and walking for us and walking with us. It says in that verse, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I thought you'll say, Amen. Yeah, yeah I will help thee. Think about that. You know, sometimes you go on the missionary field and then you phone back home and then you say, Pastor, 
There is no helper here. All the other ministries and fellowship and churches in this land, they keep to themselves. And before I came to this place, it's like they had the meeting together and they say that deeper life fellow is coming and he will lick up the land. Therefore, there is no help. And it's like they bound themselves in an oath in a covenant together. Don't help him. And so you phone back home. Can I come back home? No. But there are no helpers here. The Lord said they will help you. I said the Lord will help you. The Lord is saying, I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incense against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. They sh you now shall seek them and thou shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a sin of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. In Isaiah chapter 43, chapter 43, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 43. Verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Yeah. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Yeah. When thou shalt, and then it says, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. And then it says, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. When you stay at the post of duty. When you keep on doing what the Lord has called you to do. When the great commission is your focus. Your concentration. And your heart and your life is totally dedicated, committed to this great work of saving souls. And you're not thinking about yourself. All that is important to you is this great work. This great commission. Then the Lord says, if your attention is on the great commission. If your focus is on the great commission. If all your attention, everything you've got is on the field God has called you to be in. Then the Lord says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But if you go away from that great commission and you're not giving your heart, your mind, your attention to the great commission, then you lose the partnership and the presence and the power of the Lord walking in you and walking for you and walking with you. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. I'm reading to you from verse 9. Acts 18 verse 9. Then speak the Lord to Paul in the night. The Lord will always speak to you. By vision. Be not afraid, but speak. Be not afraid, but speak. If you are not speaking, it means you are afraid. If you are not declaring the way of salvation to the people, it means you are afraid. If you are not telling the lost of the way back to the heart of the Heavenly Father, it means you are afraid. When you see a preacher that folds his hand and closes his mouth, no program for the whole year. No evangelistic outreach for the whole year. And there is no teaching conference for the whole year. And we say, Pastor, this is December. Can you tell us what you've done from January? Well, this year, I didn't do much. I only got the people together to listen to the Monday Bible study. And since that is coming from headquarters and you're beaming it to us, I felt I should just allow the people just to have that. You mean you didn't have any program, any conference, anything this year? No. You must be afraid. 
that you are right there in the post of duty and you closed your mouth and you did nothing when there is no fear you will speak and that's what the lord was telling paul the apostle in this verse 9 be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace for i am with thee that's the companionship the companionship of the faithful with god and then it says, and no man shall search on thee to hurt thee. But Lord, I hear that 40 people have bound themselves together in an oath that they will not eat or taste anything on, until they kill Paul. Don't worry about them. That's just bragging. That's just boasting. That's how the devil talks. That's how the messengers of Satan, that's how they talk. They will not splash any drop of water on you. It says, Paul, get up and speak. Because I am with you. And no man shall search on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. God will use you. This commission, great commission will be the focus of your life. This great commission will be the thing that gets you on and the things that make you do what you ought to do. You will do it. The Lord will never fail you. The Lord will never forsake you. His power, His might, His strength, His divine ability will always be with you. You will taste and you will experience of this partnership and this companionship. Because it says, Jesus came unto them and spake unto them, saying, all power, all power. Everybody say, all power. All power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo and behold, I am with you. He will be with you. When we finish the Congress, before we even finish the Congress, begin to plan. What will you do this year? Where will you reach this year? Where will you go this year? Which regions will you reach this year? Which cities will you reach this year? Which villages will you reach this year? And then begin to plan for the Great Commission and say, in my region, every place will be covered. In my state, every place will be covered. In my locality, every place will be covered. Everywhere I go, I'll be preaching and declaring the word of the almighty God. Multitudes are going to come to the Lord because now you have the assurance if you will do what he has called you to do. He says, behold lo, I am with you always. Is with you always. I'll be hearing about you doing exploits for the Lord. I'll be hearing about you winning souls of the Lord. I'll be hearing of the testimonies of the presence, the partnership and the companionship of the Lord with you throughout this year in Jesus name. Rise up and commit yourself with courage, with courage and conviction. Say, no, oh Lord, this is another year, a new year. This year will not be a year of fear, a year of timidity, a year of cringing, a year of crawling, a year of compromising, a year of just being afraid to rise up and do what I need to do. It will be a year of courage, a year of the courage of faith. A year of the courage of faith that this year you will you, you will run the race, you will do the work, you will preach the gospel, you will go everywhere the Lord has called you to go. The courage of faith. Remember the promises of God. It will give you boldness and courage. Confess those promises of God. It will give you boldness and courage. Declare that promise of God every day, every time. It will give you boldness and courage. Build your faith on this solid ground of the word of God. It gives boldness and courage. 
the courage of faith in God. The courage of faith. The courage of faith. The courage of faith in God. Stand on those promises. They cannot fail. When the howling storms of life are sailed. It is the word of God that will prevail while you're standing on the promises of God. Remember those promises? Repeat those promises. Confess those promises. Proclaim those promises. Shout out those promises. Let this year be a year of courage, not a year of cowardice. Let this year be a year of boldness, not a year of weakness. Let this year be a year of standing on the unchanging, immovable, infallible word of the Almighty God. The promise of the Lord. The promise of the Lord. Stand on that promise. And remember, you can only claim those promises while you are in the place of duty, in the post of duty. If you stray away from the region, from the district, from the place of responsibility, then you are not under the covering of the promises anymore. The courage of faith. Not the cowardice of fear. The courage of faith. The courage of faith. Faith builds strength and courage. And the commitment of the faithful. That the word of the Lord will not depart out of your mouth. The word of the Lord will be settled in your heart, established in your heart. Commitment, commitment of the faithful, faithfulness to the word, faithfulness to the word. That's what the Lord is expecting you to have. Keep it in your mind. Store it in your heart. Memorize it. And then meditate. Meditate on the word. Don't meditate on events. Don't meditate on bad news. Don't meditate on the happenings of the time. But meditate on the word of God. The word of promise. The word of power. Meditate on the word. Day and night. Day and night. On the sunny days. On the dark nights. Meditate on the word day and night that that may as observe to do is it doing? Is it doing? You hear it, you learn it, do it, do it. That's the evidence of being a child of God. Do it. That's the evidence of staying on the word of God. Do it. 
That's the evidence that you want to be a favored, favored person in the sight of the Lord. Do it. That that may subsist to do. According to all that is written. In the word of the Lord. Then you'll make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. And then you count on a companionship with the Lord. Count on the unfailing partnership, presence and power of the Lord. Count on it. He said, I will be with you. You can count on it. You can rest on it. You can stay on it. He says, I will be with you. I will be with you. You can count on that. You can rest on that. Whatever the challenge, count on that promise of the partnership of God with you. Whatever the trial, count on the faithfulness of God. I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you through the waters I'll be with you through the fire I'll be with you to the flood and the flame I will be with you in the midst of the enemies I will be with you in all these things I will be with you count on that unfailing promise of companionship and partnership with God. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee. The Lord is with you. And is greater than all men put together. He is with you. He says I will be with you. As long as you are walking. In the past, the Lord has made. As long as you're doing what the Lord has called you to do, then you can rest on that unchanging promise. I will be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the people of God said. Amen. And the conquerors today said. Amen. Father, we thank you at this time, at this hour. We thank you, Lord, because of the calling you have given us. And Lord, as you give us the call, you're also giving us the boldness and the courage. And Lord, we pray for every one of us here, brothers and sisters, I pray. The courage of faith will rise up in every heart in Jesus' name. And Lord, when we see the Pharaoh and the Nebuchadnezzar and the Assyrians and the Amalekites, our faith, our courage will not fail in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, that this faith will be a stable faith, a steady faith. A conquering faith. And we will conquer everything that challenges the call that you have given us in Jesus' name. We will not be numbered among the cowards. We will not be numbered among the timid. We will not be among the fearful. But Lord, we accept. We accept. It's coming into us now. The courage of faith in Jesus' name. We will not fall. We will stand. We will not compromise, we will conquer. We will not cringe before the enemy, we will overcome in Jesus' name. We're asking, oh Lord, for every one of us, you've given us ministry. You've given us a work to do. There may be challenges in that ministry on the field, in that locality, or in that region, or in that state, or in that nation. But Lord, we're counting on the promise you have given us, you will never leave us. 
you will never forsake us as long as we stay at the post of duty as long as we stay in the place you have appointed us to minister as long as we stay in that region in that state in that nation in that continent anywhere you have told us to go we know you will never fail us you have never failed you didn't fail Moses, you didn't fail Joshua, you didn't fail Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you did not fail Daniel, you did not fail Paul or Peter, James, John, and the rest of them. You will not fail us in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, you will be our hell. You will be our supplier. And you will give us all that we need to make us successful in the ministry that you have committed into our hands in Jesus' name. We pray that you confirm every one of us here this morning. Come cross in Jesus' name. Overcome us in Jesus' name. Courageous warriors in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much and God bless you.